Our topics are real, uh, loyalty and peace for technical service. We heartily welcome today's speaker, Advocate Vikram Vijay Raghavan, to occupy the next. Please rise to the motors. Foreign capital flows, 
whether it be money or money is worth between jurisdictions. Every jurisdiction wants a share of the taxation fine. So, for example, if India and US are going to be companies in India and US are interacting and money flows freely between them, India obviously says that some portion of the tax that should arise from any income or any payment basically should belong to India. US will have its own way of doing it. And so the idea is that international taxation is always at the heart the taxation allocation or the taxing rate allocation disputes. Right? So if you have this in mind, conceptually, once you get the concepts of international taxation right, then the devil is in the details. Now let's look at a fundamental principle which I'm sure you already have gone over in the earlier sessions. It's called the source and resilience principle. Idea here is that to develop these international taxation principles, there are two fundamental underlying principles of taxation that there are three pieces. One is called a residence rule, where the income may be taxed on the law of the country because the excess between country and person earning income, irrespective of the place where the income is. Source is income may be taxed in the tax law of the country which are because of an excess between country and activities that generate the income before a fixed residence tax. Let's take an example. An uh, example is an Indian firm, uh, an American firm is sitting and giving some designs, let us say, right, to an Indian entity. Now the American firm, for a portion of its residence okay, in the US, is going to be taxed in the US because it's incorporated in the US. Similarly, if an Indian firm is rolling out advice to various countries abroad, an Indian law firm sitting here is giving opinions abroad, the Indian law firm is going to be taxed in India for a position of its residence here, right? and it, because it is incorporated here or the partnership is there. That is called the residence rule. Residence rules are always there. right? In India, a classic residence rule is a resident of the Indian income tax is going to be taxed on his global income. This is a standard residence rule. Right? Now, the source rules are interesting. The source rules basically say income may be taxed in the tax law of country because of an excess between a country and activities generate income with more reference to the residence in tax rate. And these rules, source rules give rise to royalty in a case which we will discuss. But let's understand it conceptually first. The idea with the source rule is irrespective of the where the uh, suppose you have a non-resident who is sitting in the UK. Let's take the same example, UK. He gives some engineering design to an Indian entity. The Indian entity pays the UK person some money. Right? Now, the UK fellow does all of his work, even his brain work, whatever work it is, he does that in the UK, sitting in the UK. Right? However, India says that the fact that the source of the money, basically, of the income is because it's from India and it is going to be used in India. There is a deal in fiction that there is a source to that the income of the UK company will also be taxed here, at least some part of it. We, should, we require some part of the taxation part. The source rules are interesting and we will look into how this develops. Right? Now, let's take a basic idea of what happens in the Indian Income Tax. The Indian Income Tax Act basically says, Section 5 is your important challenge section. Resident is very straightforward. A resident is that you are taxed on your global income. Now it comes to non-resident. You are always interested in the income of the non-resident. Is it taxed in India or not? Again, I repeat, the income of a non-resident, is it taxable in India or not? It's the fundamental question that we want to answer again and again. Now, the income of a non-resident is taxable in India only according to 5 2, only if it is received or deemed to be received in India, accrued or deemed to accrue in India, arise or deemed to arise in India. The notion of accrue or arise or receive or etc. is all straightforward per se. The more important things that we need to look at is deemed. When you say deemed, it's a fiction. A deeming fiction is a powerful entity or a powerful creation of law which deems the fiction that even though it may not be in India, it as, as if it is taxable in India happens. And that's what really section 9 is. Deeming fictions in section 9 basically say, are effectively say, irrespective of what you are doing, where you are doing, how you are rendering services, etc., that one resident's income may be taxable in India, subject to certain criteria. Right? And the criteria, different kinds of income have different kinds of rules and then tax differently. If it is the nature of the non-resident income to be business profits, his normal business profits, then he will be taxable only in his foreign country, right? unless he has a permanent establishment in India. So that is a cardinal rule which is parallel material to the DTA. All of these will have usually typically uh, parallel material or we will look at where the variations are with the DTA. In terms of 911, the parallel material section here is Article 7. <coughs> Article 7 talks about business profits. Again, let us come back to the concept here. A non-resident company will be taxed only in his country of residence and not in India from the income earned. He 
even if it's paid from India, unless we have, if it is in the nature of business profits, unless there are attributable operations here on a permanent establishment in India to which it can be taxed. This is at least the age old law that has been slowly changed over a period of time. We look into it. But that is 911. So the question is is the nature of the payment or the nature of the income of the non resident can it be classified as business profits? Obviously, most non resident would say, yes. The payments that I got from India, from, from Indian SSE, for example, yes, it is business profits. I have no operations in India, I am sitting there. There is no PE in India, hence it is not taxed in India. This is what most non residents would like. The classic case of this is a commission agent. A foreign commission agent is a classic example. A foreign commission agent sits, for example, from Tirupur, you have all these exporters having commission agents in Italy. In Italy, a commission agent is sitting there getting some local orders. For that, he gets 5% commission. That 5% commission is paid from the Indian entity to the Italian non resident entity. Let us call it some commission agents or joint together to create a commission agent company. <coughs> Italian entity. Italian entity basically says these are nothing but business profits of mine, hence classifiable under 911. And these will never, I do not have a PE, a permanent establishment in India, I do not do operations in India, hence I am not taxable in India. There is no question of me being brought to tax in India. So, that is usually the ideal classification that one residents want of 911. But the notion of PE itself has changed, undergone a lot of change. You know, this is concept of significant economic presence. There's a, we can do many lectures on that, and that is not my remit today. Okay? So I'm not going into 911 article five. The remit today is what if it is not of business profits, but what if the income payment or the payment from India or the income of the non resident, that's what's more important to look at. The income of the non resident is classified as royalty or fees for the If the income of the non resident is not your business profits, but the department or the SSC as the case will be, will come to that, right? Say that it is royalties, right, which are being paid to the non resident, then the question is, is the income of the non resident taxable in India? And that's what we're going to look into. How are incomes classified as royalty vis a vis business profits? How are incomes classified as FTS vis a vis business profits? Why should an income be classified as a royalty income of the non Why can't it be classified as business profit? In what cases, even if it is FTS, can I escape taxation? But why do I say escape taxation? Why I say escape taxation is if it is royalty or FTS, there is a deviant fiction under 916 and 917 which speaking. 916 deals with royalty, 917 deals with FTS. 916 basically says the income of a non resident, if it is in the nature of royalty, is going to be taxable in India. India is going to get some share of its taxation. Right? Right? Effectively, what they are saying is, who got in India, you can put that up for royalty payment, licensing of drawings, let's say, to a UK company. That 100 rupees of that foreigner is taxable in India. The Indian government prescribes that TDS should be withheld on this payment, say 15% or 20%, etc. That goes to the Indian government, that's the share of the Indian government. The foreigner, correspondingly, will get a credit on that amount when he pays his tax in UK. Right? So, what happens with India? Indian government is happy that they are getting the share of the taxation. Why? Right? The important thing is this is just, I am giving an example of 100 rupees, we are talking about hundreds of thousands of crores of rupees when there's transactions between Indians and foreigners. <coughs> so the question then becomes what about FTS? This is royalty activity. FTS is similar. FTS, the idea here is that if it is class if the non-resident income is class PSPs for so technical services, it is going to be a taxable in India and DDS is treated. Now having laid out the groundwork, we are going to go on a very long journey. So this is the groundwork. Please bear with me on that. Now I'll skip all this stuff, I think you know this most But the Income Tax Act and the DTA, and I was giving you only the concept of the Income Tax Act in Section 9. I told you that parity material with respect to 911, there is Article 7. Similarly, obviously, with respect to royalty and FTS, there is usually an Article 12 or 13 in the corresponding DTA. What does it do? DTAs are essentially negotiated instruments, isn't it? Which is between countries, they sit together and say, look, we'll share the taxation part in this way. Right? The act is being drafted by the Indian government, which will obviously be favorable to the Indian laws. But when it comes to the DTA, uh, the government, when it comes to the DTA, there will be pushback on various things. So you can see in the DTA various benefits given, and we are going to see various benefits given in the DTA, which are not present in the act. So coming to my point, and in fact, there may be rate benefits, there may be scope benefits. When I say scope benefits, I make it very clear. 
But the idea is, coming back to the point, when Indian government says that leaning fiction of fees for technical services of a foreign entity is taxable in India, it says this is the rate of the amount which will be taxed. TDS or Google is one thing. The same India US TTA or India UK TTA may offer a different or a smaller rate, a lesser rate. That is one. It's a 20% it may say 10% or 15% based on the negotiation between India and US, that is one. Second is, even the definition of FPS, what constitutes fees for technical services, may be watered down or there may be some exclusions more in the DTA than that. So that means every payment no longer becomes FTS as with the act as the DTA. So you can always take shelter under the DTA or the act as well, no, as I much out under section 92 and all that, right? Whichever is preferential to you, and typically it ends up that the DTA will be preferential in many cases when it comes to royalty and FTS classification. You can choose. So there is a constant battle between the Act and the DTA. The Act, you can think of it as 100 clapping, the DTA is 200 clapping. Right? The Act basically thinks about how the government views this whole thing. And the DTA is how the negotiation between two governments views this whole thing. And so you obviously get a lot more benefits there. And we will be looking into it quite deeply. Having given you this overview, let's Let's look at the missionary programs for a second before. We are not even started by the FTS We are just going to the background here. Right? So what we are doing is the, it, it is what is the conceptual understanding and underpinning of Section 9 and the DTA. But what is the missionary? The charging provisions of Section 5. Section 5 talks about deeming fiction, deeming approval. The deeming fiction or approval is uh, arising is in Section 9. You can always choose Section 9 or the DTA, whichever is beneficial to you. We would always like to go to business profits because there is no PE. But if you are going to royalty in FTS under 916 and 917, then we would like to look at the DTA and see whether it is more beneficial to us. All this is good. But what is the end result? If it is that the income is taxable of the foreigner in India, you have to withhold tax. Where is this coming? Where is the missionary provision for this? The missionary provisions for this are section 195. In section 195, what it says is, sooner your, your 192, etc. are for local taxes, you have salary, you withhold this much tax, etc. Here, it says when you are paying a non-resident, you have to deduct tax at the rates in force. What are the rates in force? The rates in force are defined in 237A. I know we will get into that here too much. But the basic idea is you can look at the Act or you can look at the DTA. But I am not interested in that. Today, we are not interested in the devil in the details issue. What we are interested in the concepts. The concept here in 192 is actually very important. The concept only if we talk about this, if the income is chargeable to tax, then there will be a reduction. I want you to keep this in mind again and again. If the non-residence income is chargeable to tax in India in the first place, then only there is a reduction. This concept was not understood by the groups. And it had to have the Samsung internal validation which will come to shortly. So there's a confusion in their minds that there is a certificate called 1952 where you can go to the department and say, is this taxable? I believe this is nil tax. There should not be any tax because there is no uh, chargeability at all. There need not be any withhold. The 195.2 is your own wish if you want to go and get it. It is not mandated. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, let's understand the concept here. First, you check under the charging projects, which is section 5 and section 9 and the DTA, whether the income of the non-resident is at all chargeable to tax in India. If so, then you withhold tax at the rates in force. Again, it will be the act of the DTA, as the case may be. <coughs> so this is the important concept. We will come to it and why we will ever on it is it will become very clear short. Now, your typical disallowance, your typical uh, non-resident disallowance, these are the cases that we do daily in the tribunals and high courts, Supreme Court. What will happen is the non-resident learning of some form, forget what form it is. Some form, some place from India they learn some income for some services. They immediately say it is business profits, they have file return, no, nothing to withhold here. So the payment from Indian entity will go without any TDS. Correct? Will go without TDS. Immediately, the, not as, uh, the department will come and say, no, that income is actually not the income that we think as business profits, that income should be classified as FTS, or fees for technical services and not as It is taxable in India. The payer, being the Indian entity, should have withheld tax. You did not withhold tax, and I will I will disallow your expenditure under 40 AI or 2001 or 160 as the case may be. Now, the ridiculousness of 40 AI and 40 EIA for domestic thing was just to understand how onerous the provisions were. I pay $100 to a UK entity for engineering business. Yeah? 
Now that hundred dollars the UK entity basically says, under so and so article of the DTA, it is not taxable at all. I am I am not taxable. There is no need to withhold. So you go ahead and pay the entire hundred dollars. I pay the hundred dollars. If anyone comes to me and then says, I am going to dissolve the entire hundred dollars, right? At the point of time in 40 AI and 40 AI will be used. He will see dissolvance of the entire expenditure. He does not dissolvance of the tax on the expenditure. It is not 30 percent. He does not dissolvance of the tedious amount fully of the expenditure. No. Not 10 percent, for example, not that. So it is around the entire expenditure. It was a brilliant idea to make sure that every payer basically is surely with him with him in the right way. But it is a very honest solution. Now that has been written down. That has been written down to only the tax, the 30 percent. It has also been written down to, if you offer it for tax, the incredible position was in 40 AIA, it is a better example to give for example. Look at 40 AIA for now. 40 AIA is giving resilience. The incredible position was, if I did not withhold tax and you offer the same tax, in your competition, you may have other directions, etc. The department will reserve my expenditure, the department will direct tax from you. Essentially, you could end up being there 60% tax for them, right? But that's how it was. Now it has all been let down, there's some sanity which is created, right? Now the fundamental thing was, hence, is the income chargeable to tax in India or not? Can I classify it on priority matters? So, now I can start my actual talk, which is that you typically go to the department to try to shoe on all the income, not as business profits, but shoe on it into royalty or FTS and then say the non resident income is taxable. TDS must have been withheld. Indian government needs that money. If you didn't withhold TDS, you will deserve under 40A or 201. That's the case. Right. So, this is the starting point of the talk, which is royalty. Right. Now, in royalty, how do you shoe on all the income into royalty of the foreign entity royalty and the provision really loves it because the provision is so widely defined what royalty so what is royalty income what is royalty is defined in 916 let's read it carefully <coughs> income by gift royalty payable by uh, a person who is a resident except where this exception clause has come to litigate it's called the sole school exclusion clause it's so much litigation i think there's like 200 300 cases in team going on this but a person who is a resident Pays royalty, right? And the definition of royalty is for the purpose of this clause. Royalty means consideration, okay? And then you have these six clauses. This is explanation two. This explanation two alone, I would think, has been subject matter of around 20, 30 thousand cases easily, easily, right? Now, and as of today, as of today, in my, I have done more than 100 cases on this itself, right? Which is like. You see every bit of the explanation has been litigated. Let's start one by one. The answer of all or any rights in respect of patent, innovation, model, design, secret formula or process. That's one. The imparting of any information concerning method of use of patent, invention, model, blah, 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 formula or process. Three, the use of any patent, invention, model, design, secret formula or process. The imparting of any information concerning technical, industrial, commercial, scientific knowledge, experience or skill. The use or right to use any industrial, commercial, scientific equipment, but not so, including the ASIC 44. The transfer of all or any rights, including land and license, respect of any copyright, literary, artistic, or scientific, including film, radio, tools. The rendering of any service in connection with the activities referred to in some process 1 to 4. You see the depth and the width of this explanation of two defining royalty. You could show on any kind of service into this. And the department has realized it over a period of time, and there lies the rub. The problem is that you take a payment made from an Indian entity to a foreigner. When the foreigner says it's just the course of business that I do, the department will say no, he will come under one of these clauses. And he immediately come under royalty. Once it comes under royalty, there is no question of where the service was rendered, where it was utilized, etc. Those questions were there initially, but all of them are gone. We'll come to that a little later. But there is no question, it's a deeming fiction. The deeming fiction is that wherever it was held, wherever it was replaced, as long as it's royalty, India has to get some tax, and so the payer has to do it. Now let's get into the meat of the problems. The paradigm here that I told you with respect to the DTA, how does it define royalty? Royalty is typically at this. This is a typical definition of royalty in the DTA. The consideration of use or right to use any copyright or literary article scientific work, right? And that and typically the use or right to use any industrial, commercial, scientific equipment. These two you have already seen here. So this goes, I think you have seen that here in this copyright, right? As well as the use or right to use industrial, commercial equipment. So 
a lot of the lot of the uh, DTA and information rules are somewhat similar, except of course imparting any information transfer all in rates will not be. Now let's get into the checkered history of royalty deals. Now that we are starting the talk of this, the checkered history actually goes as follows. We start really started with satellite transformers. Believe me, what happened was in the 1990s when cable TV became popular, right? What happened is the leasing of satellite transponders by TV channels right, was a very common occurrence. Now, this leasing of transponders, what do you mean by leasing of transponders? Asia satellite has a satellite which is sitting in the geostation and operates thousands of kilometers above us. The uplinking of the programs usually happens in Singapore or someplace outside India. The transponder is a part of the satellite which allows a particular capacity for this single signal to be At some point of time, the satellite will hover around over India and a lot of the users in India will be able to get this information. So let us take an example like ZTV. ZTV would use Asia satellites, Asia sats, transponder capacity for say a few hours right, to upload its programs. And they would not do so from India. They would actually upload that transmit, transmit, uh, transport upload would happen from Singapore. And CTV would be given the channel at that point of time, the channel bandwidth would be allocated exclusively to them at that point of time for the few hours that takes. Once it is uploaded, it is uploaded with all these satellite projects and it is a standard set of configuration. So here is the thing. Now the question that the department came up with was that the use of the satellite effectively here, right, is nothing but royalty. So the payments made, let us understand the issue here. The issue here was the satellite transponders are essentially lease payments, right? So the use of these, uh, the lease of these satellite transponders by TV channels, these are foreign satellite companies, TV channels are Indian, they are making these payments. All the activity happens on outside India. But the use of this comes under royalty according to the department. Obviously, all the payments were made through TDS, right? And from the Indian channels to the foreign satellite companies. And the foreign companies were surprised, but there was a huge amount of litigation. And the amount of litigation that followed was quite incredible. It was quite incredible. And I will point out, before uh, going into it, you know what happened with respect to New States? There was a first case called New States Satellite. The New States Satellite was a special bench decision. And the reason the special administration was formed to be surprised, because I have so much to cover, I can quickly go over this again, right? You'd be surprised. This secret formula or process which is there, right? The here also is a secret formula or process. The idea that the satellite companies are somehow giving a process. There's a process which is there. I mean, if you start thinking about it, everything is a process. Right? But anyway, the use of the transponder apparently is a process. Okay? And the best part is, one decision said, secret is for both formula and process. <laughs> Other decisions said, no secret is only for formula, it is not for process. Right? So, in one case, it was a favorable decision, in that case, an unfavorable decision saying that it was not a secret process. No, no, it is a secret process, as the case may be. And this was the service that the satellite company gave to the Indian company. And this process, secret process, is what was paid for. And for this use of this secret process is what was paid for and the case was done. Somebody is in the new space satellites, special bench came in favor of the department. They actually said that yes, uh, looking at this, it should be that the payment for transponder usage of foreign satellites by Indian TV channels is right. Okay? And I will read out the particular That's when overturned it. This was it was overturned by the Delhi. But before it was overturned, there's so much litigation of this, which I can go on and on that. But the main judgment of the Delhi High Court, which was a landmark judgment on how this to be interpreted, royalty was to be interpreted, was basically the Asia satellite. The Asia satellite case was parallel to the news case. News case went, I think, in uh, Bombay. I don't know where it was, but that was Pan Am Sat and news case, special bench reference was there, it went against the SSC. Delhi, uh, Asia, Delhi uh, tribunal had Asia SSC, it was against the SSC, normal tribunal division. It went to the High Court. High Court was in favor of the SSC, a landmark judgment in favor. But surprisingly, the Delhi High Court did not refer the special bench at all. Even though by that time, the special bench at all. Okay? But anyway, let's see what the Asia satellite uh, telephone division said. 
no income deemed to accrue in India from use of satellite outside India to deem TV signals in India, even if bulk revenue arises due to Indian use. It is not the use of equipment, nor the use of process. The one of the favorite arguments in the department is the use of equipment. Everything is a use of equipment. Suppose you have a modem and you connect to the internet, that's a use of equipment. You use a satellite transporter, that's a use of equipment. So either the use of equipment, not the use of process. Merely because the footprint area includes India and the programs are watched with ultimate consumers viewers in India, you would not mean the satellite operator is carrying out business operations in India, attracting the provisions of 91. The substance of the agreement between Asia side and TV channels is not to grant any right to use for the process embedded in the transponder of satellite, since the entire control of trans satellite and transponder remains with the satellite company, which is Asia side. Distinguish the transfer of rights in respect of property and transfer of rights in the property. In case of royalty, the ownership of property right remains with the owner. Transfer is permitted to use the right in respect of such property. A payment for absolute assignment and ownership of rights transfer not payment for use of something coming from another, therefore not property. In doing so, interestingly, the judgment referred to the OECD company. At that point of time, we are talking about taking 2012 or 11. It was not very common for judgments to refer to the OECD company. They went ahead and said so, it has persuasive value. They went ahead and said, OEC Committee Paragraph 9 talks about transponder leasing agreements, which is uh, such as that payments made by customers on a typical transport leasing agreement is not a lease of industrial, commercial, scientific to You remember that class in loyalty stocks about industrial, scientific it says it's not so. Here's the interesting thing. Due to the fact that the customers do not acquire physical possession of the transponder, but simply transmission capacity will be the nature of business profits so Okay? Why this becomes important is today is. So, Asia circuit set down the rule, said it is ridiculous to say the use of process, the use of equipment, the words which are used in, uh, in royalty, you cannot stretch it to the mean, here, the use of right or use of any place of equipment, you cannot stretch it to the extent that a satellite which is in control of some other company and then leasing a transponder for a few hours, that cannot, just because the payment is made from here to a foreigner, cannot come under royalty. Why are you doing so various observations of made, right? What happened immediately was there were amendments. And the amendments were made in Finance Act 2012. In Finance Act 2012, the amendments specifically, you'll be surprised to know, is this. Explanation 5 and 6 pertain specifically to Asia sector. And specifically for the removal of doubts, it is hereby clarified the royalty includes and has always included consideration in respect of any right property information. Whether the possession or control of such right property information is prepared, the such right property is used directly to pay the location of such right properties in India. This ABC, or especially A, was the OECD commentary and the OECD tag report, it was called an OECPR, specifically on transponder leasing. And they said, if this is the, the transponder leasing agreements are not priority because the possession or control of such right property is not prepared. So, specifically overcome that, they had explanation for it. Explanation 6, for the removal of doubts, it's helped by clarify the expression process, process includes and shall be deemed of always included okay, transmission by satellite. So it is a particular thing that they wanted to do. The hilarious part again of this was explanation 5, 6 was retrospectively included from 1976. I don't think suddenly satellite itself was there. But they kind of said, fine, it has to come from 1976. This was 5, 6. 3, 4 will come to a little later, this was on software. But these were retrospective amendments to Finance Act 2012 specifically to get over Asia side, and we will see why they didn't work out. Now, that was for satellites. It was a checkered history in satellite, it was the first bloody battle with respect to a lot of cases going up and back and forth and all. The second one was software. And all of, I'm sure all of you know now about engineering analysis, and we'll come to that, which is the Supreme Court decision on software. But before that, there was a lot of back and forth. I do want to make clear one thing. Pre this understanding of Business profits is going to be a problem and royalty in a case is good. Pre that, there are so many cases in each of these which are in favor of the SSC. Whether it be software, whether it be satellites, whether it be websites, whether it be databases, whether it be uh, roaming charges, whether it be bandwidth, all of these were in favor of the SSC. Once the department started picking and choosing and expanding the words in royalty, they came to the lot of cases. And Finance Act 2012 was a significant change. So, similarly, software. Software, way back, in 2012, Ericsson APA Delhi High Court, the concept again was simple. The department's brilliant response, and I think it's a very nice idea actually. Like say, when you install a software like Word, the first screen will be, you don't read it at all, you scroll down, right? Which is the EULA. 
So sorry, you like end user license agreement. You agree with this license as well. And you, you can't read everything. Even if Microsoft owns you, owns your child, everything. I will never be in that stuff. Right? And you just scroll down and say agree, go to the next. And then you can source. Then you finish. Department's brilliant source that it's a license. It's a license which you're paying royalty. That's the, it's a very nice argument. Go on, right? The argument fundamentally is that you are getting something of a license. It's a transfer of rights. According to that. And again, to look at the royalty definition, you have enough ammo. Right? Or you have enough ammo with the here to say that transfer of all of any all or any rights. You can use a so many of this. So in this for example, transfer of all or any rights, including the adding of license as well of any copyright. So that was their main argument, saying that when you are buying software, you are actually not buying a software. You are paying the right to use that software. And the right to use is basically a license which is granted to you, which are accepting. That's the EULA. And so they say all software purchases by India from foreigners, right? And you are talking about every word purchase, every Microsoft Office, every Excel. I mean, you can think of the thousands and hundreds and thousands of products. You think of SAP licenses, you think of these are actual licenses. In fact, a lot of these cases you buy annual licenses, correct? Right? And so they say all of this is nothing but royalty. It is a right to use. So at the heart of the problem, you have to see from the department's view. The department's view as a right to use is royalty. And in most cases, we buy right to use as always, correct? Right? So now what happened is software started. In software, they finally said, okay, fine. The, uh, the Ericsson AP long time back before the 2012 judgment itself clearly said not so. And Lucent it was a very good judgment. So Lucent said, for example, cell phones, they have lots of software. In a cell phone, the operating system is much more important than the hardware. Room. It has all these features. It has AI features, it has Siri, it has that, etc. etc. Right? So they said when you bundle the hardware with the software, you can't think of it as separate. That was Lucent. And then the sale of standard software with special service software are not customized, it's not priority and This is that's all systems are very nicely written here. These were landmark decisions at that time. Right? There was one decision called Grace Mac, if you remember in Delhi, everyone was upset the Apple car. Right? First. Second one was a complete typhoon, which was typhoon of a vision of Samsung electronics. Right? It completely upset the Apple in multiple ways. In multiple ways. The first thing he said is a transfer of copyright includes the right to make copy of software for internal business and payment made in that regard will constitute royalty both under income tax act and descriptive deal. They went ahead and said the purchase of software is nothing but a transfer of rights. When you give that license, the rights are transferred to you and you can make internal copies. Hence, it is nothing but a transfer of copyright and it includes the right to make a copy. It is nothing but royalty. 916 is expected. All the thousands of crores India spends on Microsoft, Indian government has to take 15 percent. Basically. Let Microsoft go ahead and claim their credit to their own. That's it. Now, the interesting thing is Samsung is like a double barrel machine. Right? It didn't spoil just the software problem. It also did the 1952 problem. The 1952 problem is a segue which we will slightly go into. 1952 was that Samsung basically made a mention that if you have a question, whatever the payments you are making to your business, you have to obtain a certificate from the department. You have to saying that it is nil protection. Otherwise, it is always subject to protection by the department. It is unless you have a mandatory certificate under 1952, you cannot go ahead and take the view that there is no tax ability. That is an absurd proposition if you think about it because the departments and uh, it went all the way to a decision called G technology, which I think I mentioned here. Now. So let's read 195. Any, uh, any other sum chargeable under the provisions of the Act, you deduct income tax rates in force. First, you have to submit it chargeable. Then you deduct the tax rates. If it is not chargeable, where is the question of deduction tax rates? That is the fundamental question. Now, for that question to answer, is it that I have to get a certificate for every payment that I make? That is not the intention. The intention of 1952 is if you want to make a surety of you want to have clarity, you can go and get it. Right? But if you don't, what is your what is the fail safe? You bona fide believe that the income sum is not chargeable. You go ahead and not deduct it. Right? Don't deduct that. If the department believes so, then they have the tools of 40 AI. They are the tools of 201. That's the whole purpose of those similar sections. They are the tools of penalty. The idea is that to, this isn't it absurd to say if I make 1000 transactions, so every transaction I go to 192 get, they will not even give it in a month or so, and then I have to wait for that and then decide on that, otherwise I have to report tax. That is not the way it works. But the uh, Samsung region said so. It had to go all the way to G technology. And then G technology clearly clarified this 192 certificate in terms of taxability or not is not mandatory. 
it is only the direct CBD. And there are some very nice CBDs addressed to that credit after that, especially 3 of 2015, clearly outlining how this works. Okay. Now, let us come back to software, because software is where we are. But what happened after the amendment in 2012, if you see explanation 3 and 4, I showed you 5 and 6, there's a 3 and 4. 3 and 4 clearly said software means it comes as wired. Right? Software is defined as wired. So there is no escaping explanation 3 and 4. That's the general thought process. Right? Now, Karnataka High Court, following the Samsung nation, there are multiple nations. Immediately once the jurisdictional high court comes, the other high courts in the either have to form a refer to a larger bench or they just go ahead with this. Right? So they will unfortunately make a certification. There are some brilliant decisions after post amendment. And the post amendment decisions gave a flavor of what is to come. The flavor of what was to come was in Nokia networks and Novel. Nokia networks is something that people should read. They basically said, first time we made a comment, the DTA is a sound of two handed traffic. The act is a sound of one handed traffic. That is what Nokia basically said. Nokia said, fine, you changed the act to all these explanations. Have you changed the DTA? You have not changed the DTA. The respective DTA has the same royalty definition, and we will look at that royalty definition and decide whether it's higher, that explanation to equal it. And we will decide whether there is tax to be withheld or not. And they said, no, there's no tax to be withheld. So have you not changed the DTA? Just because we changed the act, we cannot take it that was the Nokia network vision. Okay. So the question then became, interestingly by the way, this is on the DTA versus the act. Interestingly, more interestingly was the Windsor Solutions, which really understood what the issue was. The issue that the assessees were trying to tell the department was, your notion of license and royalty is misconstrued on merits. We are talking about merits here. The merits of the idea is completely complicated, uh, misunderstood by the department according to us. What he said was, the license that is given when you give to Google or the software, the daily software, is a copyrighted article. The example is a book. When you buy a book, you basically have a thing usually called an ISBN number at the back, right? which is the book number. You are buying something which is called a copyrighted article. It is an article which has a copyright embedded in it. What it essentially means is, tomorrow I buy a Lord of the Rings book right? or a Harry Potter book. And I can't go ahead and start a printing press and then go ahead and print the 10,000 copies and sell it and say that this is my, I bought a book, now I have the copyright for it. The transfer of a copyright is where I get the right to publish on my own. The transfer of a copyrighted article is a, buying an article which has a copyright embedded. What happens in software is I am buying a copyrighted article. I am not transferring the copyright itself to the person who is buying. There is a fundamental and a subtle and an important difference between a transfer of copyright and a transfer of a copyrighted article. And royalty refers to transfer of copyright. The royalty section refers to transfer of copyright. So what it was envisaged to do was only where cases why you want royalty is when that person you license the manufacturing facility to that person. And that person does some manufacturing on top of it. In respect of any copyright, the idea was that you actually provide the tools for them, the right, the right to publish further or to print further or to manufacture further. That is the envisaging of copyright. Merely like selling a book or selling a software or selling a goods which has a copyright embedded in it will not fall under the royalty clause. This was what was the argument of the SSEs before the NAPO. Then we won in Windsor Solutions. Windsor Solutions exactly took the proposition, saying that yes, there is a difference between the sale of a copyright article and copyright itself. Uh, well, say, 916 applies only to the data, not the copyright. Here it also went ahead and said, Explanation 4, inserted by Finance Act 2012, has to be read and understood only in that context and cannot be expanded to bring within its own transaction beyond the revenue proviso. What I mean is huge relief in the jurisdiction. So, the question then we get all bubbled up to Karnataka uh, having a completely different view, and then Madras, other uh, Delhi, etc., having a different view. It bubbled up to Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court engineering analysis was a landmark decision. The landmark decision was that, let us read it carefully, the amount paid by resident against a non-resident manufacturer supplies of computer software in terms of the distribution agreement in Nevada does not amount to royalty. And such payments do not give rise to any income tax in India. Therefore, there is no liability on resident uh, Indian companies to get tax. So the first portion of which is what we discussed now. The engineering analysis basically agreed with the view that there is a transfer of a copyrighted article there is no transfer of a copyright when it comes to software, LULAs. The other thing that they clearly said is once there is no tax, 
question of gene technology, there is no question, no charge of tax, there is no question of production of tax. Now, why is doing so, by the way? The engineering analysis is very detailed, it's a brilliant judgment. It has so many facets to it. One of the facets, first part was the appeal to divide into four categories. Computer software purchased directly by resident end user from a foreign non resident supplier. That was one. Payments for that. Indian companies acting as distributors of these sellers. Third was non resident foreign vendors who purchase software from a non resident seller and resell to Indian distributors. The fourth was software affixed to hardware. In all four categories, it held it is not right. In all the categories, it held it is not right. And here are the arguments by the analysis. As it is purchase, the transaction of sale of goods, and they hark back to the Tata Consultancy Service case. The Tata Consultancy Service is a very famous case in service tax, saying the sale of software is nothing but goods. Right? And so the assessees have kept saying that. When they didn't agree with that, they then said at least you should understand that royalty can't apply because it's a copyrighted article, it's not the copyright tax. Okay? That was the argument. They also went into the Copyright Act itself, 14b2, and said it not extend to the sale of copies of the work to other persons beyond the first sale. It was just the first sale which happened. It's like buying a book and buying a software. Just because I click on the license of the EULA of Microsoft Word, tomorrow I can't become Vikram uh, publishing Microsoft Word copies on my own. I can't be selling Word copies to you without this, right? So, the other thing is, the argument was obviously could be only prospective. The Supreme Court made very clear, uh, I love this Supreme Court, but before that, our friends in the department basically said the explanation 2 5 clarifies law from 1976. It's again not clear in 1976 what software was there, but it clarified law from 1976. And they made an interesting argument here the doctrine of first sale principle exhaustion will not apply to distributors. And data consultancy was in the context of service tax. Right? Um, in general, analysis, judgment itself was good. It basically said these things we know. It said, as per amended section 14, 14, 15, 52, making copies or adaptation of computer program in order to utilize the same computer program or make backup copies does not constitute infringement in of copyright and does not amount to parking with the copyright. So there is no transfer of a copyright. Right? The EULAs have to be read as a whole to ascertain the true nature of a transaction. This comes to the thing that we are really parsing the royalty definition so carefully about license or are you really understanding some and substance, substance versus form. The Supreme Court took a very nice view of that. Explanation 4 to section 916 cannot have retrospective qualification in all four categories and also. While doing so, it looked at various other issues. And one of the things that it's worth reading the judgment, one of the things, for example, it said that you can't expand the act into the EDA. When you have the act now amendments made, you can't say the EDA is also amended. It's absurd to say the EDA somehow gets changed because of the act. Right? And so the Supreme Court made that clear. It also made it clear of a very interesting thing called impossibility of performance, which we'll get to in the end. We will get to that last. Um, those observations of the Supreme Court merit a separate lecture by themselves, but we will come to some of those sides of that. But what is the revenue then post engineering analysis? One would think that they have stopped that whole thing, right? That software is no longer a question of TDS. So again, it would be payment of software to non resident for purchase of software is no longer considered as royalty. There is no question of TDS, it's just a sale of goods. I thought that is the matter. But I have done cases of post engineering analysis and I am still continuing to do so in the title. <laughs> Well, the department has taken a particular view that this engineering analysis applies only to shrink trap software. I don't know what that means, but the idea is that they are trying to say, because in that case, because Microsoft was one of those uh, petitioners, they are thinking that it is just software you can buy off the shelf. So things which are not customized or bespoke. So in many cases, you have bespoke software. Think about an engineering company, like for example, an Ashok Leland, right? You will get some software which is particularly made for you. Right? And there will be some uh, customizations or modifications. Uh, we are the one appeal in that uh, case, for example, because the department is saying no, no engineering analysis are good, but that is not true. What engineering analysis is talking about the right to use concept. The concept of right to use itself cannot lead to right, right? is what uh, they are trying to say. Anyway, we will see, we will, we will again go back to this. Interestingly, one of the segments of engineering analysis, the good things of engineering analysis is the online database of Today, if you look at it, whether it be chat GPT or whether it be online database like Nexus, Nexus, or your tax sutra, whatever it is, if these are foreign databases or online subscriptions that you do, are payments made to Indians to these foreigners, is that foreign income also royalty income? One would immediately assume how does this become royalty income? But there were Karnataka High Court judgment exactly saying it is royalty income after Samsung. Right? And the reason they are saying is again right to use. The right to use any scientific or 
or uh, the literary work which is there, which is available to you. Now, post engineering analysis, thankfully, again, this has now uh, come down. And one of the important decisions, I think, it's very well written, is called relax. In, 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 and they maintain their existences. Let's read it carefully here. Income was not in the nature of royalty and does not fall within the ambit of Article 12 3 of the DTA. It examined 12 3 in order to guarantee exception. So they did both in, in the Act as well as the DTA. It clearly said the Act will not apply. There is no doubt about it. And they clearly said this nearly granting access to a legal database. It applies to any database. Nearly granting access to a database will clearly not amount to transfer of right to use a copyright. And the, the relied on engineering analysis and Infrasoft and Microsoft that also dealt with the issue and re emphasize there is a clear distinction between transfer of copyright and grant of right to use copyrighted material. In that case, we are saying in the in case of software, it's a transfer of a copyrighted article. In the case of a database, it is the use of copyrighted material. In both cases, we are not going to get the copyright to publish that material again. I am not going to go to the existences, access the existences and start creating a Vikram Sutra or something like that which has all the content here. If I do that, there is a priority to If I don't do that and I am consuming it, there is no question of priority. It is a very well written judgment which is very recent. I hope that settles the thing. But, but having said all this, one of the things that I think engineering analysis kind of sorted out was that the notion of right to use royalty. Again, I repeat myself, mm -hmm. right to use royalty is not royalty as per 916 thinking of the department. However, unfortunately, the Vital Psycho has taken a different view. Okay? And this is much before engineering analysis, and that's, this is in the nature of bandwidth charges. It's a very famous vision called Verizon Wireless, Verizon Communications, which is the, in the Vital uh, Psycho, it came up to them that the foreign company Verizon Communications, right? They are providing bandwidth charges or bandwidth services. So, for example, this internet bandwidth that you have. The internet bandwidth services were provided by this various communications to customers in India. Indian customers then paid them for these bandwidth charges. So, lease claim, you can call it lease claim charges, you can call it IPLC, you can call it circuit charges. These are bandwidth charges. And the question was, is it royalty or not? Now, so this was obviously before engineering analysis, but engineering analysis is a software decision. Though it gives the correct principles, it is a software decision. Let's be clear on that, right? It's about software. It gives the principles of right to use it. But in Verizon communication, this was purely on bandwidth. And it was a very, very, very <coughs> wide-ranging decision. A wide-ranging decision. Let's look at it carefully. The provision of bandwidth telecom services is royalty, according to the Madras record. And the use of right to use equipment under 916 and 123D of India's record. Now, you'll be wondering what this equipment is. The high court went into detail, it's more than 120 pages of truth. The idea here is that they somehow feel that the equipment that you have with your modem, modem is nothing but a multiplexer, demultiplexer. It is required for you to connect to the internet. There may be some other equipment, for example, with respect to different circuits, but fundamentally, there needs to be an interface between the signals coming in and your computer. Right? It can be your computer directly or it can be your router as the case may be. They said that equipment is nothing but a use of equipment by you and hence the entire thing becomes a royalty charge for you. And this was their interpretation that you have, without this you cannot do it anyway. You cannot decode the signals or encode them. And so this equipment is given to you and the landing site is here. Interestingly, then it becomes a little more complicated because the Indian government rules say Verizon can come only to the shores of India, their wire cable. This is what you call these undersea cables as they call it, right? Put it to the wire net. And the Indian government prior regulations are that the local point should be Indian, which will be usually BSNL or uh, VSNL or the case will be, as the case will be. So they will actually, it's actually their equipment which will come in, and then they will have a remoting station with Verizon. But in any case, they are saying this is the whole contract you have to look at it. And the whole contract clearly is a use of equipment contract, or right to use it. Then they said it is also use of process. They said there is a process which is here, and Verizon is giving a, a use of process, and hence it is right. They are very clear. They also said it is fees for technical services. Right? They might even start a fees for technical services, but they came with They said earlier decisions were not that relevant because of the Finance Act 2012 amendments, which were very clear. And one of the interesting dichotomies that we see in Verizon, as opposed to other decisions later on, was Verizon says those amendments are clarified. That is, the explanation 3, 4, 5, 6 that I showed you, they only clarify explanation 2. 
So in a sense, they are retrospectively appealing because they are only clarifying them. So that was the reason for that. Okay? Then it distinguished Asia satellite as follows. The Asia satellite judgment, which led to satellite transponders, we started out with that. It says, as seen from the facts, the said judgment was rendered in 2011, much before the amendment in 2012. Further, after the vision in Ishikawa judgment, explanation was inserted, which we will get into. And so it then says, hence this vision is very able to distinguish there is no relevance to the case on hand, which has been concerned this type of law for very long. Ishida Wajima's position and his subsequent amendment are on a completely different footing. Right? And they only clarify the concept of gaining which we will be getting to that later. But they the Horizon judgment distinguishes this. <coughs> amendment in explanation 5, it also helped, gives very expansive meaning to the word right. You remember, explanation 5 was in finance act 2012. And our point was it could be clarifying, and if it is clarifying, I don't know how it gave expansive meaning. But they, the letters able to tell that it is nothing but explanation 2, which has now clarified in your mind what it is really about. And then the interesting final shot was the DTA is paramedia to the act. So even though explanation 3, 4, 5, 6 are not found in the DTA in any form, they still say DTA is paramedia because the reasoning was explanation 2 and the DTA are very similar. The emotional explanation 2 and the DTA are almost there. Okay? And so they said that is what we need to do. And the new explanation anyway clarify the old one, which is explanation 2. So don't get confused about it, DTA and things by DTA. So they held bandwidth charges payable by Indians to foreigners are income of chargeable to tax in India as royalty. Okay? Essentially, that means when I say community in Singapore has to offer its income as royalty income in India. That's what it is. And the payers should have held their details. Okay? Now, this was obviously before. Uh, engineering analysis, but Verizon has had a very different effect in in, in the last report uh, and probably current relations because of that. And currently Verizon is in the Supreme Court. It actually came up for hearing yesterday. And uh, it was 117 in this, and so it is not going to come up, it's going to keep posting. But they are all waiting for it because a number of judgments post Verizon, only Chennai has taken different view compared to outsiders. Now, <coughs> interestingly, what happened to other jurisdictions? Both in Karnataka and Delhi, they have basically said they, as follows. Vodafone idea is Karnataka recent judgment, so very well written judgment, everybody should read this. Explanation 5 and 6, which is the same 5 and 6 that Verizon said is clarifying, okay, has been inserted with effect from June 1, 1976. This aspect has been considered in engineering analysis, holding the question that the question has been answered with two Latin maxims. Let no project add impossibly. That is, the law does not demand the impossible. And importantia is to set legend. When there is a disability that makes it impossible to obey the law, the alleged disobedience of law is excused. It's held in engineering analysis. So in all these questions, basically they have said, no, the DTA is not changed, the explanations will not hold for, right? And in any case, if you say, I am deliberately skipped the impossibility of performance because I am looking at it in another slide. But what the argument is, in all impossibility of performance cases is, the Finance Act 2012 came in 2012, right? The Finance Act came in. <coughs> what if these assessment years were before 2012? At that point of time, when the assessee was making a payment, Indian assessee was making a payment to a foreigner, how could he know a future uh, amendment would come? It is impossible for him to understand that there will be TDS based on a future amendment, right? So, in case of TDS, as long as there were decisions in favor of the assessee, for him, and the law of the land was in favor of, for him, there is no way for him, there is impossibility of performance for him to have written deals. And this across the world in Indian engineering analysis. So for assessment years prior to assessment year 2013, effectively that, uh, when the Finance Act 2012 came, prior to that, there could not be a disallowance under 40 AI or 201. This is central position. There is no doubt about it. There cannot be a, because how can I predict the amendment? How can I predict this will happen? Makes no sense whatsoever. If I had no case laws in my favor or no high court judgment, then across the board you had judgments in favor. So this is a well thought out thing which is there. Now, what I would really suggest in, in my uh, limited experience at least, the best judgment I have read till now across the board, in all judgments across the board in Royal Care FDS, is Telstra Singapore. It is one of the best judgments, and this came last, it came in July. Okay? And it's a wonderful exposition of why it should be correct that it is not royalty, bandwidth charges are not royalty. 
So they have, they have discussed uh, in such great detail, blue sky cycling, Asia cycling, then they go on to say there is some very pertinent observations here. Let's leave the blue sky cycling observation. All that needs to be additionally observed is the broad intent of the amendment summarized in explanation 6 would not override the use and right to use test which form the bedrock of royalty of the article countries in DTA. In any event, the essay of explanation 6 cannot be interpreted in a manner which would <laughs> it is an essay of explanation 6, as it is a very long explanation. It cannot be interpreted in a manner which would essentially amount to the introduction of 916 yet again through a secretive backdoor. Right? They say you cannot do explanation 6 and say it will come again, but the DTA has not changed anything. Right? Then, it goes on to say, that only leaves us to deal with the decision of the Vedas Psychology in which Verizon and which constitutes the sheep anchor for the appellants. Okay? It goes on to say, the tenor of the decision appears to suggest it proceeds on the basis that section 9 undoubtedly applied with due respect and for other reasons of order we find ourselves unable to agree or affirm the position as cut in Verizon. We are also the firm opinion even if one were to assume expression 2 and 6 of the act applied, the position would remain unaltered. They have retired and said, even then we don't agree. Even if you are going to say it is the case, we don't agree. And they went to the notion of use or right to use, how they, how they are, what is right to use and what, what is use. Right? Um, anyway, so this is a very little transition actually. And then there is a very nice thing that uh, the department tried. The department said, because the judgment in Delstra was talking about bandwidth charges, similar to Verizon. And it heavily relied on Asia satellite and New State satellite, which were satellite cases. So the department tried to take the view that look, don't get confused about this. Those are satellite cases, these are bandwidth cases. They are completely different technologies. So he addresses that also. He addresses, he says, that refuting some of the contentions which are advanced, learned counsel then submitted the attempt of the appellant seeking to distinguish satellite cases and asserting that the same would not have an application to telecom services clearly misconceived when when bias and consideration explanation 6 to section 9 groups translation by satellite, cable, optical fiber, or any other similar technology together. He then goes on to look at the dictionary definition, he goes on to look at different DTA, I mean, it's a complete addressal of all the points which are possible. Anyway, so even here, according to the learned concept, the precept of interest generates will be applied to become apparent, telecom services will fall within the broad group spoken of in explanation 6 and fall in the category of any other signal, similar technology. So, what the, uh, the Delhi High Court in Telstra has done is they have deferred with Verizon. And they have gone ahead and said the satellite technology cases will also apply to bandwidth cases. In both cases, it is not warranty. Now, after Verizon, quickly after Verizon, there was a case called Poom Puhar with Madras. Poom Puhar was on shipping. In Poom Puhar, the interesting thing was the Poom Puhar shipping case was we had done this in the tribunal, the high court somebody else had taken senior advocate had done that, was that the ship goes from one port to another in India. And it takes port from one place to another. Now the question is, this is called a barboard charter versus a time charter. You can do a barboard charter. Who okay? would be a barboard charter of a foreign vessel? And uh, the question was whether this is this charter, barboard charter of the ship for transferring of coal from one port to another in India was royalty or not. And the Madras High Court said yes, it is royalty. And the way they went about it is it is equipment royalty. And the way they said is it is nothing but a use of equipment. Basically, ship is an equipment. Uh, industrial, scientific, commercial equipment. So they went ahead and said that. But the, again, it made these points. It came very similar to Verizon. One of the interesting things in Pumbwa, we tried to distinguish was we actually don't have control. This is picked up, coal is picked up, and then coal is taken to another place. So the PM, the PM doesn't have control over that equipment, even if you want this equipment to be equipment. But the equipment rental is already even if PM does not have control. That's what the Madras Court has come to. And in the retrospect of amendment explanation, why is tarifically? And irrespective of the transfer, the consideration paid to right to use simple sitar, a right to use simple sitar is sufficient for right So the judgment will came. Ship is an equipment based on 43.3 of the shipping act. Ship lying on. So the other thing is, um, one of the interesting things that we tried to twist them on was that if you ply between um, postal lines, right, there's this notion of what is international traffic, what is not international. Right? And so the effect will fall under international traffic and DT. So it comes from outside. Takes from one port and goes to another port. So they disagree with it. Ship line between postal lines cannot fall. See, once it falls in that, then the DT article 8 will apply, it will go to a completely different thing. Anyway, foreign ship has a PE in India, then it ships up in India and whatever, and proceedings can happen in multiple fronts. So, Verizon and Kumpuha were anomalies. 
just like things as well, the anal uh, was before its time. The reason and Cooper seem anomalies in terms of the judgment, various judgments of the other courts. Whether they are right or not, we have to see in Supreme Court. But right now, engineering analysis, though it came in software, in Asia satellite, though it came in satellite, I think it worked for overall. Interestingly, Metas report itself distinguished Kumpura in a time chapter. Uh, sorry, Kumpura was time chapter. This was bad word chapter. Right? And uh, I don't want to get into too much of those details, but it's very close. Now, coming to the royalty, uh, the, one of the last cases I want to know royalty is going to FKS. Okay. Is that Google India. Google India is a very, very interesting case. It's a very straightforward but very simple thing that you see. When you go to Google and you type, I want to tell you how it works, just as a matter of interest, because my first startup was related to this, right? And it was nothing to do, this was before law. And what happens is when you go to Google and you type some keywords, in the right hand side you get a bunch of ads, right? You get a bunch of ads and you also get sponsored links. These are called Google ads, right? And you click on that, you go to a thing called a landing page, which advertises that, that person's page. And then you may buy a product or you may not buy a product. Okay? Now, at the, the Google's main customer is not the user. The Google's main customer is the advertiser. Okay? What Google does is it has a platform called AdWords. You don't have access to that. Called an AdWords platform. You can sign up. It's free to sign up. You can sign up as an advertiser with the AdWords platform. It's a very nice and comprehensive platform. AdWords in many cases. What happens is it allows you to set bids, uh, auction bids, on a keyword basis. Okay? So suppose you're a travel agent in Chennai. You want to set auction bids on Mahapuram. Anjipuram, some place like that which you think about like Muna, whatever it is which you want to go over them, etc. And these keywords you will place 150 bits on. Okay? Now, when a person somewhere in the world searches for Chennai, okay, your keyword, if it matches their keyword, it means, so they have this concept of broad match, exact match, etc. Now let's assume you have a product. If your keyword is in the auction, then the person who has the highest bid will come in the top in the range. The second bid will come the second bid. So you, your incentive is to bid high, obviously. Right? And so this is called a victory option. In maths, it's called a victory option. The idea is that the very nice thing about this is so the users will type something and you get all these options sorted out dynamically, real time. It happens. We're talking about, I'm just giving you one example. We're talking about 100 million keywords every day. Really, going on, going on, going on, going on. So when, you, when a user clicks on that, then that advertiser pays Google for you. For that click, right? So then it's up to the advertiser to convert that click into some sale or not. That's a problem. But it's a very interesting concept because it's a very useful concept to think about it. Because in a newspaper, when you give an advertisement, you don't know anything about whether that fellow saw the advertisement. You don't know whether it was interested. You may use it for that to parcel, right? You never know anything. You are just hoping for the best. You are just giving an advertisement. The idea that this is only on click you pay. The fellow's type of keyword, which is relevant to your advertisement. He has looked at all the advertisements, then he clicks on your advertisement. So there is a huge mythic value here, which is why Google AdWords became very popular. I'll just give you a context. Google's income from these ads is around seven and a half billion a quarter. Seven and a half billion dollars a quarter. And this was like probably ten years ago. Okay? So now the question then becomes, now coming to this, is the Google AdWords program in India, right? When you when the payment is made. I'll skip all this stuff. Yeah. So what happens is Google India is a reseller of their ad program, AdWords program. So what Google India does is it goes to local advertisers and says, look, make me you come and sign up with us, we'll give you a discount on these ads. Something they do, right? They'll give all this. All they are doing is they're giving an AdWords account. They're giving an account. All the work of the bidding, etc., is done in Ireland. Right? It's in servers which are sitting in Ireland. It analyzes all the data which comes through, the options, I said, the options, etc. And that shows it to the results, right? Come on. So there is a payment of from Google India being the reseller, right? And Google IRL, right? About uh, huge, I mean, you're talking about thousands of crores. Because the amount which comes, which is a reseller, right? So the amount which comes to the Indian customers is funneled to the foreign uh, entity, which does all the work. Question is, is this royalty or not? Right? And the tribunal said, yes, it is royalty. And the reason they said this royalty is just to take a step back. They basically said the AdWord program is observed as agreement for facilitating the display and publishing of advertisement to targeted customers. Right? This is the AdWord program. The advertiser selects some keywords and the basis of the keywords advertisement displayed on the website or along with search results, and the customer selects the keywords related to advertisement. 
The module does not merely work by providing space, but it works only with the help of various patented tools and software. Now, this is all the work done by the back end in Ireland. Right? What you are seeing is only the result of it. Right? But the, the uh, I will say Google is able to target consumer users as to the requirement of the advertisers, and, uh, and it goes on to say, as he has access to various data with respect to age, gender, region, religion, I mean, sorry, language, taste, habits, blah, 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 etc. Right? Now, the interesting thing is, what you need to think about is this way. What you need to think about is like a billboard. There is a billboard which is there in your city. Right? The billboard, you pay some money to get your ad in the billboard. Then the agency that you pay the money to get the ad, they will do so many funky things to get that ad. Right? Ultimately, you are only renting space. Right? That is the argument of the SSC. SSC's argument is, you are looking for keywords and you are giving a price. Right? What they do internally to do all this magic of uh, math, Right? It's not the SSC's argument. It's from India. You are just sitting and hopefully getting some clicks. And what you do is you pay hundred dollars, you get hundred clicks. You pay fifty dollars, maybe you get twenty clicks. So you keep changing the bits. You keep doing it monkey uh, changing it. But the question is, this has nothing to do with loyalty. This is just a storage space issue. Right? It's what the department of the SSC said. The department basically the tribunal agreed to the department and basically said, therefore, it is not advertisement of the space. It is focused target marketing with the SSC slash Google with the help of technology. As he provides before I have to sell services, as he is Google India. And the other player is Google Ireland. Because Google India to Ireland is the royal. The as has not has not sold the storage space in server outside India, not sold. It is a continuous, continuous targeted advertisement campaign to focus on So while doing so, they went ahead and distinguished a lot of uh, precedents called Finstrom, Yahoo India, Trade Forest, etc. It went all the way to the High Court. The High Court sent it back to the tribunal. And the tribunal, the second round allowed it. They basically allowed it, saying that in demand proceedings, the tribunal so and so relied on Supreme Court engineering analysis and say wherein it was held the definition of royalty as a DTA between India and Ireland overrides the definition of the Royalty Act and further held that to attack the definition of royalty, Google India ought to have had exclusive rights to use the same program. So Google India was only a non exclusive distributor and so it is not royalty. So it also held that a non transferable license merely enabling the use of a copyrighted product with restrictive conditions cannot be transferred as a transfer of copyright. So to come back to the engineering analysis, the notion of what is a transfer of copyright as opposed to a right to use, the concept of right to use is no longer royalty, was enshrined in engineering analysis and it's very helpful in across the board, including Google Sense. Right? Now let me finish royalty. Royalty is interesting but very complicated. Right? FTS is much more enjoyable. FTS is 917. FTS goes like with a hammer. All that FTS is, is, again, coming back to step one, is the income classified as royalty or is the income classified as fees for technical services? In both cases, the deeming fiction is that the income is charged into tax in India. We look at royalty, how it can be classified as royalty, especially the right to use concept as being misused or used as the case may be the department to say it is royalty in every kind of case. Now, what about FTS? FTS is very interesting. FTS has a simple definition. Rendering of any managerial, technical or consultancy. So fees for technical services is the rendering of any managerial, technical or consultancy services. So if a foreigner renders any managerial or technical or consultancy services, he is going to be taxable in India. Simple as that. Now one more thing, managerial, technical consultancy is pretty wide definition as it is, isn't it? But that's how it is. The interesting thing with FTS was, it all started with the Supreme Court decision called Ishikawa Jima Ahima. Ishikawa Jima Ahima was a peculiar decision. In fact, it created this twin test. The twin test being, both the rendering and utilization have to be in India for it to be considered fees for technical services. All right, is given. So, rendering and utilization. This twin test was unheard of till then. The concept of twin test of both rendering and utilization was brought about in Ishikawa Jima. So, what it meant was a large number of cases was that in almost all cases, think about it, what is fees for taking it is architect. An architect is sitting, an architect company, let's say, is sitting in UK. He gives you a bunch of designs, right? Now, this is clearly a technical service. There's no doubt about it. He is giving you the designs to use in an Indian house. It's not an Indian company, right? So, India company pays UK company for technical services. But as per Ishida Vajima, now, under, is it coming under managerial consultancy technical? Yes. Right? It comes as a technical. Okay? It is a normal consultancy, architectural consultancy. But Ishikawa says no. You know why? Why? Because rendering and utilization tax 
utilization is in India. I am using those diagrams to build my factory here. But the rendering is outside. The rendering of those services, which was the, those, uh, those, those designs were created outside India. In almost every case, you have the rendering outside the utilization here. Unless that fellow comes here and creates it here and utilizes it here. So each tower is almost like a boom. This is like an Akshay Patra for all the uh, Indian people at that point of time when the fees were taking the services. Because the print test is tough to, uh, to uh, agree with, right? or to satisfy. So then what happened? Right? Immediately the government, basically immediately, they have finance act, I think 2005 was Ishtar, but 2007 amendment was the, uh, it's a failed amendment unfortunately. The drafting was not that clear. Drafting was for the whole blah blah blah, everybody is there. Such income should be included in only income, whether or not the non resident as a residence or place of business or business direction in India. There are two judgments of the Bombay High Court and the Karnataka High Court for Clifford Chance and Jinatan. They basically said, the explanation, unfortunately, in the current form, whatever you buy, is not going to change the law. Ishita Vajma still is the law. Right? So it was like a failed attempt at uh, the explanation. Then, Finance Act 2010 was an amendment. And that time they got lucky. They took the proper amendment. Right? The amendment reads as follows. So the removal of laws, it is hereby declared for the purpose of this section, income of an organization shall be deemed to approve or arise in India in the past five or six or seven, and shall be included in the total income of an whether or not, the non resident as a residence or place of business or business in India, or the non resident as rendered services in India. So, irrespective of where he renders the services, it will be deemed to approve or rise in India. So, to be fair, I mean, just to be fair there, Ishida Vajima is a peculiar relation because the whole concept of a deeming fiction is wherever you do it, I want to give it here. But they have somehow came up with the view that if you render it there and utilize it here, it's it. It's well, it worked well for us, but it was good when it lasted. The interesting thing is, Finance Act 2010, by the way, I want to tell you, is that you remember one thing, we discussed about impossibility of performance. This was in the Act of Finance Act 2012 for royalty. The same thing applies to this. I have won personally around a dozen cases on impossibility of performance of Finance Act 2010. Because all years prior to Finance Act 2010, Ishita Vajima was really out there. At that point of time, I need not have withheld TDS. How could I know there would be a Finance Act which came in 2010 which I so this is impossible to perform. There are so many cases, Chennai Tribunal and others you can take a look. Right? Now, so, now we are very clear that the FTS scope is very wide. Managerial digital consultancy, there is no need for a business connection. The place of rental utilization is useless now. FTS and royalty game fictions are powerful and any payments to non-residents will not be put into royalty or FTS. Royalty, we have engineering analysis, so the right to use FTS is not royalty. That much we have. FTS, what do we have? What are the differences for FTS? There are some interesting differences for FTS. These are the differences we will go quickly. The make available clause. This is the most important clause today that is there in a DBA. By far, this is the most important clause. Right? The make available clause is a single line in a double taxation agreement. Right? After the Finance Act 2010, in the Act, there is no revenue utilization. In the Act, if you are coming as a managerial technique consultancy, it's over. It's FTS. But, in the DDA, it is not so. I don't know if I have extracted the DDA and I hope Anyway, so the DDA reads, um, yeah, the DDA will read, fees for technical services will be <coughs> very similar to Indian Act, rendering technical manager concerns, no change. This will be, then, then they will have another para uh, in most DDAs. It says that it should make available as long as this applies, FTS applies, as long as it makes available technical knowledge, skill, design, or technology. So it will It will basically say this is an example of a thing called a restricted source rule. It is an example of a thing called a restricted source rule. What they are saying is no doubt the rendering of utilization wherever it can be anywhere. No doubt it is FTS. But not all fees for technical services will fall under the fees for technical services and the DTA definition. Only if such fees for technical services are made available, the word make available is there, right? The technical skill, knowledge or so and so to the recipient, then only it will be some consumer as fees for technical services. I will give you an example. Let me give you a very clear example. So much I don't have make available. Anyway, let me give you an example. A standard example is, the India-UK treaty and the India-US treaty both have make available clauses. There are around 30 treaties which have India-Singapore has make available clauses. 
the make available clause, if it is present in ETT, what it says is, forget if you are FTS, you are, it is clearly taken as a service. But, has that technical service been made available to you? Now, what do you mean by made available? Because what does the word make available mean? For that, you go to the India US DTA, there is a memorandum, a technical memorandum, which gives beautiful examples of what make available means. And I will explain what it is. The word make available was introduced to say that the service provider is making available to the service recipient these technical services for the fees such that the service recipient thenceforth need not come back to the service provider for the same service. Let me repeat. We need not, the service recipient, once he gets the fees for technical services or the technical services from the foreigner, let's say, he need not go for, because he has got the knowledge of how to do those services. He has got the design or he has got the data or he has got the information or the knowledge or the technology, whatever skill. That has been transferred also. Right? So he need not go back again for this service, for this same service he will not go back again. That is what make available means. Which is why I put here, teach a person to fish instead of giving them a fish. Right? So what fundamentally happens in make available, make available class, and many surprise I don't have the make available class here, but what happens in a make available class, you will see that in most DTAs, big DTAs is that, classic example is, this DBS region. I strongly suggest to read DBS, it's a fantastic region. 3, 4, 6, and F. 467. What it effectively says, it, India, I think it was India, UK, I think in that case, there was a payment for a report, a report to be generated. I think it was a, a zoological report or some fossil report, something like that. It's a testing report to be generated. Now, it is clearly a technical service. There were technology people involved to create this report. A lot of expertise involved to create this report. They created the report. The Indian company got the report. Now what did they get? They got the output of the report. Tomorrow, if they want the report, again, they cannot create the report themselves. They have to go back to that foreign industry. So the fundamental difference is, are you making available the technology itself? Are you making available the knowledge itself? Are you transferring knowledge? Or are you only giving the output of such knowledge? We have won dozens of cases of this. It's a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool. And in every case, we will come up with the same argument. I have to go back to him again. Whether it be marketing, whether it be technology, whether it be, he has not, he has only given me a quote. I want a case in Bangalore, which is on, according to me, I don't even know what they provided. But anyway, if I have to do it, I would not be able to do it, I have to go back to him again. Right? So it's important to understand that make available is a powerful tool which is left to us with respect to these DTAs. Right? And it restricts the source tool. It restricts what can be done as a fee for taking this Now, Chennai had some peculiar decisions done. There was a very peculiar decision, I think Greg said the yeah, this was this, where it said, there's a flywheel which was tested. Okay? Now, <laughs> and this was a long time back, I don't even remember the decision. So we, the flywheel was sent all the way to a foreign land country. And then there was some testing done and then it was sent back. So just because it was sent back, they said it is made available. What I have got made available, I have got back the flywheel only. I have not got back the testing, how to do the testing, right? But anyway, these things happened and this was early on in the idea of understanding. So, but there are some very good decisions on that. The other escape for fees for technical services is a common thing called a common technical, we call it a standard service. If you can prove it is a standard service in not involving human intervention, typically, then you can say it is not fees for technical services. The classic example in this was um, the famous decision of Skyser and RP Center. Basically said when the element of human intervention is not there, there is no question of fees for technical services. The whole concept of fees for technical services arises only when there is a human expertise which is involved. So what is the standard service? According to them, cellular networks are standard service. So it's not fees for technical services. But it's an open debate. What is the what is standard service, what is not? Right? So um, I think here is a nice uh, thing. The affords a test of specialized exclusive and individual requirement of the user or consumer who may approach the service providers system systems. System. So, so. The exclusion rule. This is a very complicated rule. And I don't want to spend too much on it. I'm already running late, I think. The exclusion rule in 917B is one of the hotly contested as of today rules because of conflict in decisions. 917B has a thing saying that a person who is a resident, I told you I will say it later, talk about it later, except when the fees are payable in respect of services utilized in the provision carried out by such calling this phenomenon, or for the purposes of making or earning any income from any source outside India. It's a very peculiar way of looking at it. So you are saying it is fees for taking the services, the person who is a resident, right? going to pay uh, to a non-resident, except 
for the purpose of making or earning any income from any source outside India. Now one would think that that means that every time I pay outside India for fees for technical service, I can somehow say it is for making or earning any income from the source outside India. So this has been the subject matter of debate. The interesting thing I think everybody agrees on now, and the first few patients of Chennai based, these are our past two patients. The interesting thing that they are saying is I think can be done very, can be looked at very well here. The term source means not a legal concept, but one which is a practical plan. And the source of income is created the moment the export contracts are concluded. The customer located outside India is not the source of the income, though it is the source of the money is received. There is a distinction between the source of income and source of receipts of money. And better psycho does not follow. This is a Havel's decision. Havel's decision completely overturned the thinking here. I will tell you what the thinking right now is. On. The thinking right now is that if you basically use foreign resources to do foreign work right, and earn money outside, then the payment for those foreign resources are not fee for resources. The classic example is Motif India. An Indian software company paid for the services of a Philippines company to take care of their foreign clients. Right? And this was not held to be make a make I mean, not held to be FTS. Because of it was learning from I wanted to learn from my foreign clients. And then from that source of money only, I'm going to give some portion to these people to help me with that. And hence this was gone towards this payment towards them was really offset from that, which is a source outside India. And so it's a complicated thing where the source rule has to be looked at it what is outside India. One of the I saw one example which I think is an interesting one. Um, yeah. The CAT uh, Anderschaft, KKK West Germany in mm -hmm. Metals, it basically said the royalty was paid out of export sales, and hence the royalty is for sales outside uh, is of sales outside India. I would say the only way that you can convince today a tribunal or a high court of this on this exclusion rule, it's a very complicated rule. The only way you can convince is if the source of the money for the payment that you are doing for some work you are doing itself is generated outside and all the transactions are outside. So you have some other entity like how this motive is, some other entity fixing or doing things for your non-resident customers and they are paid by that non-resident entity and it is set off against yours, this amount will not be considered a fix. This is what you can at best try with the source rule. I don't think the source rule can be used for normally saying just because you are doing exports, the output is outside, I am earning time to earn outside India and hence it is not royalty. There have been attempts like that. We are making money outside India can't be a generic word. As the as the Harris decision says, the source of the income is still India. The source of the money is received is foreign. That's all it is. So what we have to be careful is that distinction of the source. Um, by the way, there was a recent decision which people may want to know. This is 2023. Uh, this is a good example. Right? Shell Global Netherlands provided engineering services related to manufacturing of coal gasification plants equipment to LNT. These services were provided by the SSC to LNT as is Shell Global. Right? for its EPC contracts outside India for its overseas customers. So this Shell Global basically did the work for the overseas customers of LNT directly. Right? And then this was said to be not the FTS because of the push. Services were rented by the SSE from its office abroad and payments were received outside India. In such a case, this was no difference. <coughs> there are some other interesting exclusion clauses in the DPA which may be useful. One of the interesting ones is A and C. FTS, we call it fees for technical services, managerial technical consultancy, but there are some exclusions. The exclusions are typically provided in RFI in a DTA for teaching in or by education institutions. I remember we won a case with I think from payment to the University of Warwick. Basically, in such cases, if it is the payment is for teaching in or by education institutions, even if it is of technical services, then it will not be considered FTS. It will be excluded from The services that actually is actually inextricably linked to sale of property. One of the cases was that there will be some technical services which are related to a huge rate machine. Right? Obviously, we say it bundles around with the rate machine, it's a sale of goods. If these services form part and part of the cost, that's what it is. Okay. Doesn't come into FTS. Now, coming to the last few slides, what are the other differences that you can take in the FTS? This is one of the most interesting ones which you can be possible. What about certain double taxation agreements which do not have the FTS clause itself? There are like that. India Thailand is a good example, India Indonesia is a good example. There are cases where the fees for technical services article itself is not So you have 917 in the act, correct? But you don't have a parameteria uh, article in the DTA, then what? So recently I won this case in Chennai Tribunal. The fact is this, if you look at article 7, which is business profits, 911. <coughs> business profits 
starts with this is business profit taxable in that country this is the country of residence and this is pe in the other country which is probably india then it goes on to say 77 will say all other articles which are deal with specific sources of income specific incomes will be dealt with those articles separately right what it is is called a carve out so our argument was we default it to be business profits then if you have fts if you have royalty etc then those articles will apply so if you don't have fts it comes back to business profits right that was the argument and we tried to accept it our first set finding show in the absence of article dealing with fees for technical services the payments made for services rendered in the course of business would be covered only by article 7 of the dta once it is 7 there's no pe here not taxable that's what it is right Now the Madras Supreme Court in Bangkok has it's a peculiarly written decision, but that's what it also says because it has multiple things. But effectively, that's what it says, right? So this is an interesting way to escape, as I said. Suppose you have a country which has a, you are doing some dealing with a country which has no deal, no article deal. This is one way to escape. This is one of the differences. So make available is a difference. This is a difference. These are the kind of differences. Exclusion clause is a difference. Right? Impossibility of problems. I have told you about this before. But if you happen to be before Finance Act 2010, you can definitely use this. And uh, let me skip this. The last one is MFN class. I'll just end with the MFN class. I think I'm already almost to us. So the MFN class is as follows, right? The MFN class basically said the most favored nation class was there in many treaties, especially with the OECD countries. What it said is, if India has a treaty with me. And then India goes ahead and has a treaty with another uh, country, which has better scope or better rate. Then that benefit should also apply to me. This is equivalent to saying this cheetah goal kind of business when you are playing young. If you are my friend, right, and you are becoming friend of him, you should have, yeah, I should have the same kind of benefits or access, right? So effectively, what the idea was that there will be cases, a standard classic example is India France. India France did not have the make available clause. Right. So what does it mean? All payments which are managerial, technical consultancy became FTS and taxable in India. So all French companies are paying tax in India. But India, UK, very much has an equivalent class. Like they were the original colonial lords who negotiated an equivalent class, right? And so payments to India, UK will be restricted unless the technology itself is transferred, right? And so in many cases, technology will not be transferred. In many cases, so FTS will be not will not be taxable, no TDS, etc. India France has an MFN clause. MFN most favored nation clause, saying that if India negotiates treaties with other countries which have better rate or scope, it must be applied to me also. So immediately we took a view, and Styria India, the case is called Styria India, took a view that India France treaty automatically can import India UK make available to you. Right? It is both rate or scope. By the way, there are different. I don't want to get into this. I gave a separate lecture in Madras Chamber on this. Wherein there are different types of MFN clauses. They are different, but simple as as to this: the rate or scope of a treaty can be applied in this. So India UK should be applied in India France. Clear. Yeah. Now, for some reason, the treaty clearly in the MFN clause in the protocol says shall also any favorable rate or scope shall also apply to this treaty. Okay. But the Supreme Court has now come with MFN. So this is a, around uh, two dozen cases in favor of the SSC. Also by the Supreme Court, there is a recent judgment called Nestle, uh, which which basically Supreme Court held against. Yes, the way the Supreme Court is interpreting is the what the department is saying. It's an interesting way of looking at it. They are saying even if the DTA protocol says has this clause, says that and you can take a better thing, unless the department notifies it in their gazette, a separate notification to this effect, that will not come in. But The protocols of a treaty are integral parts of the treaty, which themselves are notified. They have all been notified. But no, this specific benefit also separately has to be notified treaty by treaty, according to the department. And uh, the Supreme Court has accepted. The sneaky way of doing it. Let me give you a story on this. India, France, the department went ahead and notified a circular saying that the better rate can be imported into India, France. Imagine the way they did it. They said it is 15 percent as opposed to 20 percent or something like that in India UK. So India UK is 15 percent for FTS. In India France is 20 percent. So they went ahead and notified and said yes, we agree with the MFN clause. A better rate can be taken from it. But the scope they deliberately did. They deliberately were silent about the scope. Scope being made available. The made available was not available in India France. 
it was available in India, okay. If the MFA were to be properly applied, then that board should have come in, they skipped it. So they would say that's fine. It's what the department notifies. Right? So the question became an international law question. Is it that the government has to again notify for that treaty to become effective, the protocol to become effective? Our argument is this automatic application is there because the original treaty with the original protocol has been notified. The department said no, every other substantial amendment has to be notified by the government because the citizens' rights are affected. The Supreme Court agreed with that. So that's why it is. So the MFA clause used to be an escape for FTS, saying that I can import the interpretable clause and hence escape through that. Right? And hence say it is not FTS. But no longer so, no longer good law. You have to see where the so overall, these are the various views, right? So the short point is, there is royalty, there is FTS. There are various views to somehow shoehorn income in order to into royalty and FTS. I think there are two landmark patients, right? One is the positive one, which is engineering analysis and royalty. The right to use royalty no longer is royalty. And so that you have to see. And the other landmark patients are very Verizon and, 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 and SEA, which are in the negative with the SEC, but it's how it is. Verizon may be coming to Supreme Court, but uh, MFN class no longer is a good escape to the FTS. And FTS, no doubt, that make available these are best hope as of now to avoid FTS. With that, I think I give you an overview of right in FTS. Thank you very much. Hi, So I just wanted to say that you made a spell bomb. Thank you. You wouldn't ask any questions. That's so very we never you put you know we never you never put any doubt in that mind. Thank you. We have been done in full flow. No, I think you know you deserve a very big applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you ask me one question? Yes. Supposing there are some lot of uh, uh, you know software being available from of the vendors, uh, where we can use the software and pay as we use. Uh, let's say in uh, a customer CRM or you know, mm -hmm. like that. So, what, how exactly this? Uh, I think it comes back to a subscription model, right? Yes. So, I think that will we'll say it's not right. So, because a subscription model is only a right to use. Okay. And a right to use is not right. So, that's the general understanding. See, it's that, that software you cannot reproduce, or that software you cannot resell. As long as that is the case, there's no transfer of power. So, there's no uh, software. I, I would say that you have a strong case on right now. So, we will see. If not, you can come to me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, sir, excuse me. I have a question. Sure. Uh, a payment made to the uh, factor, can we consider that to be your uh, FDS of managerial payment made to? Factor, uh, who is uh, who's an non-resident? A fact factor. So, factor payment, uh, so what he does is, uh, let's say a company has customers outside India. Okay. Uh, so, he will be uh, uh, coordinating and he will be managing the receivables outside India. He will be uh, ensuring that he is collecting on behalf of a resident here. So, why, uh, why are you saying so you are paying only uh, essentially commission charges? What are you paying? What are you paying? It will be considered as factor charges. And it will be different in each and every agreement. The terminologies they use will be completely different. So, if we have to look at the substance, so we can consider this either as a commission or interest or a managerial fee. How is it interest? I mean, interest is like how do you calculate the percentage? Is it linked to the? It is. I mean, I mean, the linked to the tenant. So I put it this way. It seems to me very much it is one one input, but they will not be specifically mentioning the interest rate. No, it will not be the usual. They could be on case to case basis. It could be different, but in some of the arrangements. There will be no uh, time based. Uh, the, the, the way I would say in what if you can get away with this is right. So clearly we come to manage the charges. Right? There's no doubt about that. So it's clearly fees for technical services. There's no doubt about that. And but, the exclusion. No. Yeah, but the exclusion is for the make available class. So you have to choose a factor who is in a country which has a make available class. You can't even use MFN anymore. So you use a UK. I'm sure UK will do most of this financial money and stuff, right? So you use a country where there is a make available class. The second thing I would say is those agreements have to be careful in that they don't mention the factor charges are related to interest in any form. Because then they will take a separate article called interest, which has nothing like this. Interest, you have to be directly tedious. There's a separate article, typically article uh, 9 or 7 or something like that, right on that. So you have to make sure that you kind of uh, say that this factor is, is paid essentially commission charges or managerial charges. You can always take a view that it is commission and start with business profits. 
right? Or you take a view which is FTS and start with Makeup. Either one. But can I uh, take a combination of for the uh, uh, FTS and the peak uh, exclusion, the 9170? Uh, nine, one, oh, 9170 won't apply for you. 9170 won't apply. See, the problem is here, right? 9170 says that you are earning money from those people and that is what you are paying uh, for him, the foreign agent. As I said, Havels clearly says, there has to be a one-to-one -one very clear matching there. Correct? In your case, it's much more complicated. So, the department will say, is this a privity of contract between you and the factor for that payment. Right? And but so, I would say because of the number of the factor only, I'm actually engaging business with the value. Absolutely. That's, not, that's the same with commission agents. Mm -hmm. So, commission agents, for example, right? let's take normal commission agents. The reason why you are going to a foreigner at all is because he was introducing you. Right? But they never accept the exclusion principle for commission agents. But here the ultimate collection is going to be uh, you know, assured by the uh, factor. In that it's assured as in, in what sense will he assure it? Uh, so uh, he takes the risk of the... Uh, if they don't pay then he, he will pay you. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. If he, they don't pay he will pay yeah, you. Yeah, that depends on the right Yeah, exactly. So, 9170 we can try. I doubt it will be 9170. Right? Because that's what I said, the notion of uh, making uh, money from earning money income from a source outside India, then everything can be extended into that. You will not, you can probably litigate on 9 b and see whether that fits, correct? But you will not get a uh, department scrutiny notice without saying 9 which is not going to work, right? So forget that for now. Your, your end point is interesting. The notion of underwriting charges, right? There are many cases on that. There's Morgan Stanley's underwriting jet program. So for that, I think that is the way you should take it. If these are managerial or technical services case, maybe use make a bit. Straightforward get out. So if you take a business profit route, it immediately hurt the department that you are trying to say is something very simple. It is not so, right? In your case, I would say FPS, make a bit of it is straightforward. And it will be interesting to name itself. It will be interesting to Because earning a source, it is, as you say, it is earning from there, and then they are underwriting it. I doubt it. It then become this whole principle to principle, I have agent time, yeah, then. But we'll see. See that. Okay. Thank so, you. one more doubt, sir. Did I include subscription of data messages? Yeah. So, I have visited us on my online company. So, yeah. for after maintenance, we yeah. subscribe for uh, multiple subscriptions abroad. I know, I know. Like, yes, yeah. Yeah, for where this over at least, especially in UK and Europe. So, all the subscription platforms, we have a right to use. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. So, it's a subscription yeah. Yeah. Basically, the companies like Rolls Royce. So they give their database itself. Right. With the user's